So what we're looking at are cells which have been grown in culture. And on the surface of the cell, there are all these thousands and thousands of small virus particles. Just weeks ago, this virus was unknown to science. Now, understanding these images is key to saving lives. Professor John Nichols and his team at Hong Kong University are studying how the new coronavirus replicates in human cells. Their work is already shedding light on its mortality rate and why it's proving less deadly than related virus, SARS. In SARS, it really started replicating in the lungs and less in the bronchus or the upper airways. But this virus seems to be more likely at this stage to replicate in the airways than in the lungs, which is good. So that can explain why it's not as, as dangerous as SARS. Understanding how the virus replicates could ultimately shape the way it's diagnosed and even how it's treated. This isn't the first time scientists here have been on the forefront of a battle against a deadly virus. As specialists in emerging viral infections, they found themselves at the center of the 2003 SARS epidemic. It's here at this university that major strides were made in the fight against SARS. And it's that rare experience and expertise that's now being harnessed to combat this virus today. The university was the first to isolate the virus which caused SARS. Professor Malik Perez is among those credited with controlling the outbreak. He says while the mortality rate for COVID-19 may be lower, it's spreading more rapidly and could even be transmitted before a patient develops symptoms. There's no question that this is more transmissible than SARS and more difficult to control because unless you really get people very early and have them isolated, breaking the chain of transmission is challenging. Whereas with SARS, that was possible. The university is working on a vaccine, but it's still months away. Back in 2003, candidate vaccines for SARS were also developed. But funding was cut once the virus was brought under control and a vaccine never produced. Professor Malik says if work had been able to progress further, they'd be better prepared today. Even if we are able to dodge the bullet this time, and I'm not sure, there definitely will be another time. And I don't think we can keep dodging these bullets forever. One of these days, we are really going to have a major epidemic that will really disrupt you know, the global economies, global lifestyles, and, and things we take for granted. So I think it's time that the global community, particularly the economic community, uh, took this very seriously. Theirs is a race against time as COVID-19 continues its spread around the world. With Professor Malik warning the prospect of a global pandemic is now touch and go. The World Health Organization has stopped short of declaring the outbreak a pandemic, but has asked countries to be prepared for one. Professor Marilyn Addo is head of the infectious diseases section at the University Medical Center Hamburg Eppendorf. And she joins me now on the program. Professor Addo, pleasure to have you with us on the program. Can we expect a vaccine against the coronavirus anytime soon? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that has to be not anytime soon. So scientists are frantically working towards the vaccine and we will have vaccine products available, but um, not in the coming months so that they can be rolled out to the general population. What is the earliest time period we are looking at that a vaccine could be made available to the general public? Well, you know, like it's a little bit difficult to speculate, but there are certain steps um, that are part of the process of developing a vaccine. So some parts go very fast. So like the, um, the sequences of the virus became available very fast. And so in the test tube, vaccine can be generated quite fast, sometimes in weeks or months. And many are already kind of uh, in that stage, but then they have to be tested for safety. We're giving a vaccine as a product that we're giving to somebody who's healthy. So we have to make sure it's safe to give so it has to be tested in, in small animals um, to see if it's safe, if it makes antibodies, if it does this, the thing that we want it to do, if it protects. And then it has to be manufactured and manufactured to the highest standard. So those steps can really not be abbreviated that much. So the first vaccines will probably go into humans for testing for safety in the spring, April, May or um, maybe there are some that are faster, but we will not be able to have them for general population before next year. And that would even be very fast. 
next year would be fast. I mean, what does that mean for the current outbreak? So essentially what you're saying is it is unrealistic to expect uh, a vaccine for the current outbreak. Yes, unfortunately, that is like a no. That the expectations are well, the science is so advanced. Why can't we make a vaccine fast so that it has an impact right now? But this is just not the way um, products like vaccines or even drugs are um, can be manufactured and scaled up in sh this short period of time. In that case, I suppose the uh, next question, Professor, would be: uh, What use is a vaccine if it is developed after the outbreak it was developed for? Well, I think a good, good example is um, the, the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. We didn't have vaccines then, we didn't have any therapies, but um, vaccine development started there in full force. So we have a, a current outbreak, uh, Ebola outbreak in the DRC, also a public health emergency of an, uh, international concern. And um, the development that we had done many years back or four years back is now paid off because we now have a licensed product and it now saves lives in the current outbreak. So there might be outbreaks with this coronavirus in the future. We don't know yet what the development will be. Is it going to stay? Is it going to go away? Will it come back? Is it going to be seasonal? And maybe next year we can protect people from um, virus infection with COVID, the coronavirus infectious disease, SARS-2 coronavirus. Professor, is there a way of being ahead of the curve? I mean, is there a way for vaccines to be developed uh, before the emergency is already upon us? Well, this is actually, um, this has been an initiative that was started by the WHO and also other organizations in the aftermath of the Ebola outbreak. So to be proactive, to identify organisms um, that can cause pandemics and actually SARS and MERS and other coronavirus were among those. So vaccine um, development for SARS and MERS has already been underway. Um, and uh, there is also on that list a disease X, so a new disease. So we're developing vaccine platforms that we can react faster when a new um, pathogen comes. And those uh, initiatives are already on the way and we are already faster than we've ever been. But unfortunately, it's not fast enough to make an impact on the current situation, say, in Italy, in Iran, in China, um, in the coming right. months. We'll leave it there for the time being. Professor Marilyn Addo, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.